So I don't usually uh, do schematics for people, but on this occasion I thought I would. So this is the schematic for this um, capacity tester. Got plus V and minus V. We've got two resistors here. Two of the I think these are about a one watt resistor, 160, 160, and therefore if that was 12, this point here would be six, and six volts goes to the Arduino Nano. This just means that the um, onboard voltage regulator doesn't have to try and dissipate, you know, the equivalent of um, you know seven volts or whatever it would be. So if that's 12 volts, this does the resistive work here, and these get warm instead of the Nano. So 6 volts comes here, and then it only has to uh, kind of step down 6 volts to 5 volts, which is easy work for one of those AMS 1117s. Um, then we have the 10K and the 5K resistors here. The voltage divider, which um, basically provides the, um, the voltage in uh, reference in A0. Um, so 10K and 5K... If 12 volts was coming in, this would resist off two thirds, and this would resist off one third. Therefore, there would be an 8 volt drop here if it was 12 volts, and 4 volts here, and this is what would go into the A0 pin, 4 volts. And then from here, we'd scale it up mathematically using the code. I got a capacitor here just to ease off, like just to try and prevent any, um, I don't know what would you call it, noise and stuff, uh, so that the uh, basic the readings basically. Uh, leveled out and smooth. We've got the nano of course and we've got the fan and the um, high power resistor which is 8.5 ohms. There's actually an equivalent resistance here which is quite important but um, it's in the code anyway so I won't need to go into that at the moment. We've got the MOSFET with the gate, the drain and the source. I always get confused with these two. Drain from source 2, that's what I try and remember. Let's go into the D2 pin which is a data, uh, sorry digital pin. We've got ground, 5 volt, SDA and SCL, which is of course um, a communication protocol, and 5 volts and ground power of course, so the power can get back, so that's the LCD. D3 and D4, so data 3, data 4, are switch pins, which basically short to ground uh, in order to provide a signal. We've got ground, which is uh, obviously ground for the nano, so it can complete circuits uh, which it needs, and uh, that's it basically and minus V goes back to the battery and negative terminal and that's the schematic for this particular project so there we have it okay the first thing you need to do is go to sketch and then go to include library and then go to manage libraries when it loads up type in liquid crystal i2c alright liquid Crystal I2C. Oops. And go down, and it's by a guy called Frank de Brabanda. Okay, so install that one. That's the one I'm using anyway. Now, in the actual code, this is what you've got to do. I'll, I'll try and explain the logic of the code too. So, include the libraries to start with, define the pins. So this is, you know, I'm not going to go into absolute depth with this, but define the pins, the pins that we're going to use on the Arduino. Okay, prepare the library. Then over here, run load. These are just markers and things for later on. So run the load uh, is set to false. Last millis, last millis pole, last millis LCD. I'll explain this later. Go pin last state and, and stop pin last state. Again, I'll explain in a minute. Then we've got const voltage, right? Or system voltage equals 5.09 so to find this turn your Arduino on and then when it's turned on plugged in etc then um, put a voltmeter from ground to 5 volts and whatever the reading is put that in here it helps with accuracy pretty basically you know so next thing is flow uh, voltage per count so that's the system voltage which is this here divided by 1024 now I could actually put that in there but uh, I didn't so this gives you the amount of volts per, per count basically because the Arduino ADC uh, has counts from 0 to 1023 so that's why we do it that way. Now voltage divided 1, voltage divided 2, these are the uh, resistances of the resistors 
uh, which form the voltage divider which allows the Arduino to um, to read the voltage into the A0 pin. So again, you need to put the resistance values in there. Then the multiplier equals this calculation here, which I don't need to explain. Then we have the load resistance. Now, the load resistance is the equivalent resistance of both the um, the load resistor and the fan. Now, to find out the fan, basically what you'd need to do is provide ten, uh, sorry, twelve volts of power to the fan, and uh, basically you could just, um, you know, work out how many amps are, are flowing through it. And you could do that using a DC power supply or an, an ammeter. And if you can find out the amount of amps and you know the voltage, divide the voltage by the amperage and it gets the resistance. Then use a, a resistance calculator online and put in the two resistances. The resistance that you've got from your calculation and the resistance of the load resistor as well. And you'll come up with a calculation. For me that's 7.51 ohms equivalent resistance. So the next thing, we've got amps, seconds sum, amps, seconds count, I'll explain later. Battery voltage sum, count average, again I'll explain later. Milli started, I'll explain later. So we're going to set up now. This basically sets up the serial uh, area. And this is so you can print serial data back to the PC for diagnosis. Now it's not actually essential, but I put that in anyway. Now this here is important. So pin mode, the pins that we set before, their names, the MOSFET pin has got to be an output pin, so we can actually output to the uh, gate of the MOSFET. Um, the GO pin and the STOP pin are input pull-up, which means they're inputs and pull them up to, to 1 or high by default. Um, that stops them floating. Then battery voltage pin, this is just an input pin. And um, the voltage pin is an analog Pin, which means that basically it can sense uh, voltage. It's not a digital pin, in other words, it's not just high and low, it's analog. And then we have the LCD stuff, so in it, backlight, set cursor, print this, delay for a second, and then press to start, print that on the LCD. Oops. Okay, the loop section, this is where um, most of the complexity lies, okay? so. First thing, millis now equals millis. So basically millis is the time uh, that it is now in milliseconds since the um, code started, okay, since the loop started. At least that's my understanding of it anyway. So it gets the time now. Then, if the digital pin, uh, sorry, the go pin is not what it was on the last state, you'll see what I mean in a minute about this, and the go pin is low, so in other words, uh, if it's if it wasn't high before and it is low now, and we're not running the load, then it basically runs runs the load, you know. So milli started at zero, amp second sum, resets everything, and run load true, okay. Uh, sets the MOS, MOSFET pin high and basically turns on the load, and then it updates go go pin last state. Now, if the stop pin has changed state, in other words, it was high and now it's low, or whatever, and the stop pin is now low, and run load is true, in other words, it's running, and we've just pressed the stop button, then print this to the serial, and then set run load to false, and then uh, set the MOSFET pin high, in other, uh, sorry, low, in other words, turn the drain off, so turn the resistor off, stop draining the battery. So if the run load is high, in other words, if we're meant to be running the load or, you know, draining, then if millis now is greater than the last pole plus 100, because we're going to do this 10 times per second, so 100 milliseconds, uh, you know, tenth of a second, then we've got counts. So get the battery voltage pin and then multiply the uh, digital, uh, what can you say, the digital value from the ADC, multiply that by voltage per count to get the actual voltage into the pin, um, and then we get the voltage 
coming into the pin and multiply it by the multiplier because remember that if we get 12 volts in divide it by 3 that means that 4 volts is coming into the Arduino and we've got to multiply it back up to get the actual voltage so that's what we're doing there then we add we add it to a sum and then add the amount of counts to the um, to the pole count if you like then last millis pole equals millis now so we keep track of when the last pole actually was so it basically does that 10 times then if millis now is greater or equal than last millis LCD plus a thousand so basically this process is every second then get the amount of seconds they get the amount of minutes get the amount of hours basically it's all worked off the milliseconds uh, thing so you know you can see the calculations here uh, minutes is seconds divided by 60 etc and then print that basically to the uh, LCD and, and stuff um, get the battery voltage average so that's the battery voltage sum divided by the battery voltage count so I think that was earlier up here see this over here battery voltage sum so this is the samples get the samples and work out the mean then set them back to zero ready for the next second and basically just uh, plug in these values here so we work out the amperage so we know the voltage we know the load resistance um, because that's we can read that now and then we basically print these values to the screen we get amp second sum and add the amperage to it so every second we basically add the amperage to a sum and then we add a count as well then we get the amp second sum so the total amount of amp seconds and then we divide that by 3600 to get us amp hours and then we print amp hours to the display so now if the battery voltage average is less than 12 volts then we want to stop so we say run load equals false digital right MOSFET pin low in other words the battery is discharged now it's come to 12 volts and we want to stop testing and at this point the uh, LCD will stop updating and it would just show on the screen what all the values are so how many milliamps the battery actually is and um, and that's the code for this particular project all right so here we have a battery a test battery this is seven and a half amp hour battery and um, I've connected it up. Now in real, you know, in a real life situation, you wouldn't have a breadboard. Here. You'd have a PCB, and you'd have some fairly thick cables, but short cables with crocodile clips, and you'd probably connect them to the terminals, and it'd work like that. Anyway, it says press to start, so let's press to start, and immediately you can hear the fan, or I can anyway. Let's have a quick look at it. The fan spins, and this should be getting warm in a few minutes, or maybe a minute or so and um, that's that now I've always got issues with this display here that it's because there's a loose wire I don't know which wire it is but of course again this would be sorted um, if I had a PCB anyway so this here says the amount of time that it's been running for this is the amount of amperage which it's currently pulling and this is refreshed every second um, this is the amp hour capacity and this is the current voltage so Currently it's 12.9 volts. Now I thought I fully charged it, but maybe I didn't. So 12.9 volts, um, 1.72 amps. We can actually get a calculator and, and check that out, but um, I'm fairly confident it's somewhere near. So after one minute, the calculated uh, capacity is 0 0.03 amp hours. And I'll probably leave this for an hour or so and see what it does essentially though when the voltage reaches 12 volts uh, that's its useful voltage um, or its useful uh, current uh, used up so at 12 volts the thing will shut off and this will stop draining and we'll simply look at the amp hour capacity then and um, that will be job done okay so I'll come back in a bit 
Okay, so it's now an hour, five minutes and 23 seconds later, and it's finished. It says that the capacity is 1.81 amp hour, and that's because it's been, um, you know, sustaining a draw of about 1.6 amps for over an hour, and therefore it's calculated it to be that. Of course, sometimes it would have been like 1.9, and it probably would have dropped all the way down, etc. But it's calculated that the amount of capacity is 1.81 amp hour, and the voltage now is just under 12 volts and uh, and that's pretty much everything in terms of how my battery capacity checker works so as usual thanks for watching and see you again bye <laughs>